Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to be doing some basic t-tests using Jamovi. Um, and so to dive right in here, I have a data set here um, that is fictitious, I believe. I forget where I originally got this. I think it was simulated um, in the past. And this is, so in this case, hypothetical organizational data with a number of uh, variables about various metrics of workplace performance or um, various variables that would be of interest to someone in like human resources, people analytics, something like that, right? So you can see stress, anxiety, conscientiousness. So that's one of the big five personality traits, cognitive ability, workload. Um, so overall, how much work you have to do. And then two ratings of performance, one at time one, whatever that was, and one at time two, whatever that was. And so let me pull up PowerPoint to keep us organized. So we're going to do some one sample t-tests. And for starters, let's answer two questions. We'll do th three basic analyses here, or I guess two analyses that we can uh, use to answer several questions. And so first, how does stress at our location compare to the entire population? Or let's say we collect the data across the entire organization, and the, the data that we have here is just our specific work site, right? So like one like satellite branch of the overall organization. So we want to see how our stress levels compare to the entire organization. And we'll say for, for the sake of simplicity that the population mean is three, right? And this is on a one to five scale. It's kind of right in the middle. And we want to answer the same question for workload two with a similar population mean of three. So let's go to Jimbovi and look. Well, for starters, before we go any further, I think it's always good to check out our descriptives. So let's do that. So stress and workload. Um, let's look here. Uh, we don't need to do frequency tables. Mean, median, just making sure we got what we usually need here. And let's do a bar plot for the heck of it. Oh, I guess that's not telling us too much. Um, yeah, because there's individual variables, right? Um, so we see here stress, the mean is 2.39, workload is 2.95, and the population mean was 3. So it's already starting to look like, okay, workload's pretty close to that. Um, stress may be maybe far enough away to be significant, but we need to check and see. Um, so let's go ahead and do a t-test. Let's click the t-test button up here. If you don't, see, I, th I think this comes standard on Jamovi, but if you don't see that, you can click the plus modules button and then manage installed and then find it in there. But I think that this one's default. So we'll do t-test and here we're doing a one sample t-test. We'll get into the other types um, in future analyses. So before we get started, before I move the dependent variables over, um, let's look down here. And so we can see there's a number of tests. In this case, we're just using what's called the student's t-test. That's what we're covering in, in this class. Um, some additional stats, hypothesis. This is where we'll actually set the, essentially the um, null, and alternal, the null and alternative hypotheses, wow, are covered here. So our test value is, in this case, the population mean. And so in this case, we want that to be three. And we're testing if our samples means are not equal to, so this first option, the population mean of three. So it looks like we're set up there. Let's go ahead and pull stress and workload over. And we see our results pop up right here. Can I zoom this in at all? Unfortunately not. I apologize. Um, so if you can't see this, because it is kind of small, we've got our um, statistic. We can see the p-values first, I guess. Stress, the p-value is less than 0 0.001, so that's significant for sure. Workload is not significant, and that makes sense based on what we saw with our means earlier. And so we see our, our t-value for stress is minus 6.46, so that's pretty large. Um, workload is relatively small, but again, that makes sense because it's not significant. And you can see here uh, this note showing HA, Basically, that means alternative hypothesis, um, mu not equal to three, right? And so that's essentially what we're testing with this specific t-test right here. Um, you see our degrees of freedom in this column, right? And so it kind of gives you all the basic information you could want. If I wanted to calculate Cohen's D for effect size, I can check that box. And there we see Cohen's D. That pops up. And so for our significant one, then, that means that our... Um, mean values in our sample were on average minus 0.5 standard deviations away from the population mean 
um, if we're just rounding this 0.47 to 0.5, so minus 0.5. So basically about a half a standard deviation lower than the overall population mean. Um, you could add a confidence interval for the effect size if you want. You can do a mean difference. Let's clean this up a little bit. A mean difference, so that shows um, how this mean compares to the uh, mean that we're testing, the, that value right there. Uh, descriptive plots, if you wanted to plot the overall descriptives, right? So I encourage you to play around with this. Um, but that's the basics for that test. Um, let me go back to PowerPoint. And to summarize the results then, we can say stress scores among individuals at our location report the mean and standard deviation were significantly lower than scores in the entire organization. Um, here just pulling the degrees of freedom, the T statistic and the P value. And then we can add in our Cohen's D effect size interpretation since this was significant. We'd say among our location staff, the stress scores were on average 0.5 standard deviations lower than the entire organization. And then for workload, we would say that there, this was not significant, right? Essentially, um, the same approach, same general formatting, just without significance as opposed to the significant result from the first one. And so let's look at one more t-test here to finish up our example. Let's say we also want to look at performance. And just like stress and workload, we want to compare it to the entire organization. And we want to basically, we want to be able to like celebrate our employees and say that, oh, their, their performance is better than the overall organization, right? So we want to see if ours is significantly greater than this population mean of four on this one to five scale. And these are just hypothetical numbers. Um, we don't need to get too deep into the actual meaning of these scales. This is just to show you how to do it, how to interpret it. But let's go ahead and do a descriptives here to do a quick analysis of that. So we see our mean for performance time one is actually less than four. So that's obviously not going to be significant. Um, but performance time two, we can check here because it is higher than four. So let's see how far um, that difference is. Or in other words, if that difference is significant. So we'll go back to t test, one sample t. I'll pull these over. But you'll notice the test resets. So right now it's testing if these are not equal to zero. And they obviously aren't. So it's going to show these significant results. So just be wary, make sure that you've set up your analysis correct before you start interpreting what's in the table. And so here we want to say that our values are greater than the test value of four, right? That was the population. And if we do that, sure enough, we see that for performance time one, 3.92, obviously is not significantly greater than four. However, performance at time two is, right? We see our T statistic of 2.2 and a p-value of 0 0.015. Let's go ahead and get an effect size for that one. We see an effect size of 0.16. And so just like before, we can interpret that. So we could say at time one, there was no significant difference, right? That's, I will read that to you. Um, however, at time two, it was significant. So we report our mean and standard deviation. And we re report our, uh, our t-test results. And again, the Cohen's D on average performance was 0 0.16 standard deviations higher. All right, so um, a real quick short uh, overview of how to do these t-test analyses. Um, like I said, I encourage you to play around with it. And for me, the main thing to be careful of is to make sure you set up your analysis right and include the right variables before you start interpreting the table. Uh, because I've done that before and then I get really excited get ahead of myself only to realize that I was interpreting the wrong stuff. So I hope this is helpful. I uh, will see you around.